We watched Zack Snyder's Justice League. We've all got loads of free time and that is a complete waste of it, so why not? No, to be fair, I'm just digging for the sake of digging. And the fact is fucking four hours long, Jesus H. Um, but it's, 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 it's all right. <laughs> so, cool. Right. Well, in, in the summary, we can go, yeah. we can go if you Thanks, want. Thanks, everyone. That's okay. it, everyone. Yeah, Thanks. Catch, Please like and subscribe. The next one. Well, I... <laughs> Click the bell. <laughs> so I deliberately didn't watch the theatrical release. Well, I just hadn't and then didn't want to. And then thought, yeah. here's a justifiable reason for me not to watch it. So that I will come at this with completely sort yeah. of open eyes to it. Um, and yeah, I did have half an idea that I might watch the theatrical release at some other point. Having watched this, I'm not going to bother. Are you not? No, See, if if can... if this is a marked improvement on that, then no, yeah. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm okay, though. From my point of view, this was a it was a much much better film than the theatrical cut. Like just just like head and shoulders above what the theatrical cut yeah, was. Yeah, but this is the thing. But I think the bar has kind been of, set as so a rel- low. Yeah, the theatrical cut was such a mess. Like it, it literally, there were whole chunks of it that I found just didn't make sense. And this did a great job of explaining why those things didn't make sense, which made me sort of feel like I enjoyed this more because there were a lot of moments in it where I just kind of went, oh, okay, I get it. Because it made sense better. all of a sudden. Or that, that, yeah, that, that looked, that explains that or that bit is just more relevant to everything else that's going on, or, or that bit's kind of tidied up and I like the way they've sort of shifted. And then it sort of got me thinking, why did, why did Joss Whedon think that what he did was acceptable? I thought this was a way better film than the previous film, which isn't hard to do because that previous film, the, the theatrical cut, sorry, is... Um, is really bad. It's a really bad film. I watched it purposely in preparation for this, and I, it's it was it's almost embarrassing that that got released to cinemas and that people would defend that other film. I can understand why people will <clears throat> think this film's a masterpiece. It is in no way a masterpiece, but I can appreciate what what they want to see in this, and it is so much better than Whedon's cut that I get that. This doesn't feel like a film. This feels like a mini series, and in fact, I, mm. I feel like it's a it's a weird mix of the two. Yeah. Um, and and when it is more of a mini series, when it is introducing the Flash, when it is introducing um, uh, uh, Cyborg, Cyborg. Uh, yeah, and Wonder Woman less so. But when it introduces those characters and it gets you to. Like their scenes and their bits, they're awesome. They work mm. really well. Like the the gel the gel stuff in the Whedon cut holds no weight in comparison to how this one is, and it doesn't even feel like the scene has changed that much. But the tone of everything and the I don't know it, there must be the way it's cut. I need to look at those two scenes again. But it just feels like it holds more weight than 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 anything in Whedon's cut. Alternatively, this is also flashier and has way more slow motion like moments and things that are drawn out that try to give the effect of depth when there isn't actually depth there like the the, the, one of the best scenes in this is probably um barry allen is that his name the flash his his intro scene yeah it's probably the best scene yeah it's probably the best everything about that works so well it's clever that he steals the hot dog which is funny and then uses it at the end to get the yeah. job <clears throat> it's it's a touching moment with him and the girl and in fact you're kind of like this is kind of cool oh i hope she's in it a bit more this will be interesting you never see her again and it's one of those things she'll of, be in the flash movie she'll perhaps, be in the standalone uh, movie no she will she is a character from yeah, the yeah she flash becomes his, girl, she's his girlfriend yeah. so this would have been nice if this was like an hour long on the Flash. It basically it would have been nice if this was the Flash film and we had a cyborg film in this kind of yeah. style, maybe. <clears throat> because this is this feels like Zack Snyder trying desperately to catch up with Marvel and shoot, having so much 
that this should have been either two films or it should have been yeah. a, a mini series that that fleshed it out. However, the second half of this film started to drag. Oh yeah, like, hugely I, for DC with every film they've made. It's like they've just rushed it because they've yeah. realised that Marvel spent years building up all these characters and i'm not saying like the marvel films are masterpieces no they're not but, but the world building they are the world impressive. building is very very good and they're just they're far more enjoyable films first scene with the flash was the brightest part of this film like it's such doom and gloom beforehand and then it and then it, it it all lifts a bit because you've have and he is sort of like the comedy character I guess but his yes. that whole bit with him and uh, so, yeah I just it was my favorite part of the film I was kind of bored with this film by after about two and a half hours I'd guess you watched it all in one sitting I you? did watch it all in one sitting it probably changes it slightly as well but no I, yeah I was I, I was kind of enjoying it enough like it's not mm. a, this isn't a bad film it's not a great film either. It's a bang, yeah. it's a bang yeah. average film. Spoiler alert, when Steppenwolf gets the last box, so the third of the mother boxes, mm. he says, and so begins the end. And at that point in the movie, there's still an hour left. Mm. And you're just like... Well, the end takes time to come. <laughs> if I was coming at it from your point of view, Chris, as in I haven't seen the, the other, other one. one, I don't think I'd have enjoyed this as much as I did because a lot of the things I enjoyed were those little moments of realization that things were things made more suddenly made more sense or things were given room to breathe like the whole um the whole Wonder Woman introduction the bank yes. heist that whole thing is considerably longer than any of what you see in the movie and it's a lot you know the, the action in it is a lot better like it's much better crafted it's not quite mm. as jump <clears throat> around um it still doesn't make sense that she would go to all this effort of saving these people from being blown up and, and stopping then, everything and then, and then, blows then the literally side of the building out. blowing the side of the building out and, and blowing that man up in front of a group full of school children and it's like one just, man just, left you're, you're, you're fast man. enough to yeah, one guy left. You're fast enough to stop bullets. Like, smash bullets. And he's reloading. He yeah, he's yeah, reloading. You can't just, just punch him in the reload. face. Knock that him out. That was ridiculous. Yeah. In, in the Whedon cut, the whole film is set around the relationship between um, Wonder Woman and Batman. In the Whedon cut, it opens with Batman capturing a parademon. So, so oh, Batman yeah, it's so knows it's an, it's awful. It's really awfully done. He's it, it, like catching this burglar who seems to know an incredible amount about <laughs> all of this stuff that's going on. It's, it's nonsense. such a bad scene. It is a really bad scene. But effectively, Batman knows about everything that's going on and then is pulling this team together to, to, to fight <clears> the aliens. In this, it's completely switched up that he's just trying to pull people together because he thinks there's going to be some threat. There's some threat, And yeah. it's not until later that he actually finds out, no, they're here already, mate. Like, this is all... Yeah. This it's not serious. until the Amazonians take half hour to light an arrow and send it flying mm. that he knows shit's getting real. What was the point in sealing that as an Amazonian temple? There was that whole bit about them sealing the walls to keep Steppenwolf inside. And he falls off the bloody cliff. Well, Is that what he get out? I mean, let's not get... like The fact that it fell off a cliff doesn't matter because the fucking thing's got a skylight. God, oh. he, they all come None of the boxes the were well line. hidden. They do the bit with the humans no. and the, the men. They dig that a hole about that deep yeah. and just shove the cube in and then they bury it. It's like, what are you on about? This is such a precious box. Like, what are you but doing? Like, I, I... That, that, <laughs> that runs all the way through that nonsense because yeah, so the, parademon, the parademons can sniff out or smell out or whatever it is. They can sniff out the, the scent of the mother boxes on people, but there's a parademon on the other side of a single glazed window from the sidewalk. Yes, walk, yes. And it just gets and distracted and it. flies off. There's, there is, there is still, there's so much in this film that if you sort of start just oh, yeah. chipping away ever so slightly, it all starts to crumble. That, that they have this battle on Earth. Darkseid then gets injured, gets on a spaceship, disappears, doesn't realise... Just forgets that, where it is. The, forgets the same planet. What, what is going How, on? Like, especially for, like, a conqueror, like he's supposed to be. Yeah. 
how on earth would you forget this great and he defeat? Took, like, he took how, a thing to the shoulder. It's not like he got a bullet in the head and lost no, his mind. No, he like, just he, got yeah. injured, and then and that was it. I, I was quite surprised how boring Batman was. I mean, I'm sure the di because the dialogue's still quite not very good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty I, plain. Shock. I think what's weird about this one is I don't know if there's less dialogue than the Whedon one, which makes it more burial, which is weird considering it's four hours. But then there's a lot of slow motion action in this that mm. I think it might be true because the the Whedon cut, the theatrical cut, has so many off jokes that just get it gets littered with the talkies, talky talk 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 talk, and the dialogue is rough, really rough. Aquaman's really uninteresting, um, and yes, I, I he think is. Jason Momoa just d demands that he must appear as Jason Momoa in almost everything he's in. It was a bit too predictable with him. Oh, like well, he he doesn't want to be involved. He will turn up at some point to save them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's like okay, fine. Like I can, I can, fine. You know, you have those kind of tropes, and in, in a superhero hero film, you're gonna. But it was just everything was just a bit flat and a bit dull. Like after I watched this, actually, a couple of hours afterwards, I watched Infinity War and Endgame, and it's like it's night. Really, it's really trying to rile them up, isn't it? It's but. <laughs> But do you know what? I kind of was in the mood for a good superhero film then because I hadn't watched one. I just watched a bang average one. <clears throat> and I thought, to me, that leads to side, right, okay, we'll watch those. And, and how did they compare? It, it is night and day. Like, you, you feel warmth for the characters. You feel something for the characters. They say funny things. They say interesting things. There's there, there's back and forth. There's a rapport between the characters, and it partly has just been set up because of the previous films, and also just because they are better written films. They're also better acted films as well. In this version, Steppenwolf is far more of a character mm. than he is in the Whedon cut, the theatrical yeah. cut. Yeah, really. To a point. Oh God, Chris. Yeah, like it's <laughs> honestly, it's so bad. The Whedon cut. It's so in Ooh. this there is in this there is moments where you kind of I don't say you feel for him, but you can see the uh, he's probably actually the best acted, maybe one of the better actors in this. I don't know. It must be mocap, obviously, but like when he every time he is talking to whoever that thing is, not Dark Side, whoever his second in command is. Yeah, when he was talking the, to the the metal it's, phone. It's like Dark it's, Sid or something, and it? it's he's got a very similar name. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, when he, whenever he's talking to him, he's got like a there's slight tear in his eye because he's so angry at what he's done beforehand and so desperate to make up for it. And there's a real like, I will do this for you, and you actually feel it. However, and there's a depth and some it, backstory to him. But it, but it never gets explained. Yeah, there's one line where he it's alluded to that he has done, he's failed in some way, and that was it. That was, I mean, to be fair, that was, it I seems think, to me like the one line refers to what he did in the theatrical cut of Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really need much more from it than that. That was that was fine for me. But again, I think that comes down to the fact that in the theatrical cut, he just turns up and it's like, why are you doing any of this? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. there's literally, there's no reason. At least in this, there was an element of <laughs> understanding to what his motivation was. Yeah, however, then they make, they basically make Darkseid that version of Steppenwolf because with yeah. Darkseid, it's like, I just want to blow up, I just want to destroy planets. Yeah. And you're like, oh, so the in between, the guy underneath has got more of a like mm. character arc or reason to do well, something oh, I mean, than, well, than Darkseid. Mm. Not character arc, but he's got more, he's got more reason in he's the more plot motivation. to juice. More motivation. Again, having then watched Infinity War and Endgame to see Thanos actually have a a proper reason for doing what he's doing, a reason that you could almost justify. Yeah, a re yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I remember could, actually there was a hashtag at one point that Thanos was right, and it was it, yeah because there was there was some justification for him doing what he was doing. And yeah, whether you, you agree could, you, with his thinking or yeah, not, you can you, see his point. You can see his point. With Dark Side, I kind of think, well, like he's a conqueror. That's what conquerors do. They don't really need a great deal of 
justification. They just want to build their empire. They don't. I can kind of let it go a little bit. It's nice when you're making a story to do that, yeah, though. Like, actually... Otherwise, what are you telling? <laughs> yeah. Well, you can just start throwing in random things like an anti-life equation. It is a thing from the comics, and it's what apparently... Darkseid uses or would have used to turn Superman bad, which is what the the nightmare visions that that Batman has are. are when, you know when he the right the, the, the very new strange ending, epilogue. Very strange epilogue meant to set up the next two movies that, that uh, obviously uh, aren't going. It, to. Should have and after they beat him in the battle, they should have just ended it. I don't know. I I don't know why that kind of got was allowed. Unless, unless like sort of who made this film? Is it Warner? Is it Warner Brothers? Yeah, but Snyder, I think, gets the final say on this cut completely. Like it right. is, he he t- he didn't get paid for it because he wanted the final cut on it. Because they have no interest in doing anything with what he's done. So this ending, they kind of went, yeah, put in whatever you want. You can allude to more films if you want. We're never going to make them. Mm. I don't know. I wouldn't say they were never going to make them. Not after this. I don't think they'll make them with him. I don't know. Do you think he, this uh, is this is kind of like his his pitch to get the job back? Well, again? I think I uh, well I think a lot of people have literally so so Joss Whedon right stepped in and he's got getting a lot of shit because everyone's like oh my god look at the crap you put out Whedon. However, Whedon was asked to come in. To get that film to under two hours or two hours, he was asked to put more humour in it and brighten it up. And he made a mess of a film and it's awful. However, he literally did what the studio wanted. They did. did Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers are the ones who wanted this. It was unfortunate of what, you know, obviously it's terrible what happened to Zack Snyder and his family. Um, However, it does seem like Warner Brothers were like, well, he's out the door. We still have our creative control and don't have anyone battering back that they want to make a three and a half hour film. We'll get Whedon in, get him to shorten it, make it funnier. That's what the kids want. And I think a lot of people are now going, hang on a minute. Zack Snyder's cut. It's pretty decent. Oh, uh, you know, a lot of people are blowing it up. But, you know, th- in comparison, Chris, mm. it is a pretty decent film. I, I do not and, doubt that at all. And I think people are, people will then say, we'll give Zach another chance. They're already saying that he's he's designed it as being a trilogy of whatever. And the next film would be a Superman, mostly a Superman film and stuff like that. So it's already being touted. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't deny it, that it, it wouldn't happen. I wouldn't doubt it, sorry. You wouldn't doubt it. Well, maybe. But I, I do think because the bar has was set so low, I don't doubt that this is an improvement, but it's still only midway. It's still not that great. It's okay. I, They've yeah, taken but, it from diabolical to okay. Yeah, but Batman versus Superman, I would say, was was it was better than the Whedon cut, but I would say it's it's worse than this. I just they're just not very well written films. Also, and I know, like, I, I have issues with Superman. I don't like him as a character. I found it really irritating that this, they sort of build this team up without him and they're sort of capable. But basically, it all boils down to, oh, we just need to get Superman back. He'll come back and do it for us. I, no, I, so, okay, so this also might be left over because of the Whedon cut. The Whedon cut makes it feel like get Superman, win the game. This, this one is what actually, this felt like to me. No, no, this this one had more to it. You had to have Cyborg who had to um, disconnect the boxes. You had to have the Flash run really, really super fa- Like, never, he's never run faster than this ever. And he had to run really fast to get this charge done. Um, Batman was shooting things a lot with his guns. Batman was there pointless. Was, Batman there was, was the, pretty pointless. Uh, yeah, I, I feel quite sorry for that him. Batman was pointless because Batman doesn't have any powers. Batman in that uh, in that yeah. context, Batman is pointless. Uh, yeah, and, it, but it, but I would say that they tried to justify him by him just going, "I will, I will sacrifice myself to get this done." Yeah. It was like, "What mm. can I offer? I can offer my life. Like yes. I'm going to go do it." And I think well, that was all he could like, offer. Have have him be the sort of the head of the table kind of thing who directs traffic. Um, yeah, and then uses his, his influence and stuff, but he, he just didn't really do a lot. Also, Batman doesn't use guns. Yeah, I've I've gotten. I think I think these films have gotten me used to him holding a gun. I think in the Whedon one, doesn't he have more of a laser gun in the Whedon cut? In the well, he uses cut. the laser alien guns at the end, and it was the first thing I was like, "Hang on, 
Batman doesn't use guns. That's like supposed to be a whole part nice. of it. Of... This ain't your granddad's Batman. Is it? Yeah, it's not Adam West, mate. Not like what? <laughs> yeah, Kapow. I'm more with Tom on this because the context of it. Everybody in this, pretty much, has a role to play. Well, well, no, not everyone. That's not. But but like you know, Wonder yeah, Woman does the distracting. Cyborg does the ununifying the unity the thing by actually plugging into it. In the in the theatrical cut, it's literally just he plugs into it, calls Superman over, and Superman pulls them apart. Yeah, there's there's none of this going they into go, it. There's no like <laughs> they go they go. Is there is there going to be any blow blow back or whatever? And he goes, I think we can end it. And he goes, good because I like being alive. Yeah, that that was in the theatrical cut, Chris. That's what yeah. we'll cut from this. There is definitely more of a team vibe to this, but they do, in both circumstances, I think they acknowledge that they can't win if they don't have Superman. Yeah, but in the, in the too strong. Yeah, but in the theatrical cut, it is literally just Superman turns up and they make Steppenwolf scared. Steppenwolf is killed by his own parademons oh, yes. in the first movie because he's scared, he's scared of Superman. The parademons feed on fear, so therefore they just go for Superman, uh, for, for Steppenwolf as soon as he's afraid of Superman. That's and he gets, stupid. Yeah, he just gets done by his own things. Where At least in this, he, like, he actually gets defeated. <laughs> it's yeah, actually he, nice. gets, he gets punched and stabbed and she cuts his head off, off as, as he falls through the pool and Darkseid just crushes his head. It's yeah. like the most humiliating defeat I've ever seen. But I quite like that as a, as a little scene <laughs> of that last bit and then like boot his dead body, like literally <laughs> throw him back through the pool and cut his head off. It, what, like you're right, it was like how humiliating for the now deceased Steppenwolf. But... It looked quite cool. <laughs> like every action scene in this was a marked improvement on the action scenes. The action wasn't bad. I didn't mind the action in this film. There was some some entertaining fights. He makes good visuals. He's he's a good visual director. This film had too much slow motion in it and was too yeah. long. But yeah. it did, for the most part, look really good. Yeah, like he, you did, might, he, you know, he did, I'll give and, it that. And that's what he does well. It's, you know, you look at 300. 300 is not that good a movie, but it looks fantastic. Yeah, it looks great. I remember watching 300 when it first came out, and as well as being absolutely amazed by everyone's abs, I was really, really impressed. There's a whole sequence where he just follows the guy along, and it's like watching sort of almost like a choreographed violent ballet as he mm. sort of chops these people oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. pieces. And it's wonderful to watch. He's, he hasn't lost that. He still does a mm. really good job with those kind of things. But he's been allowed to kind of sort of indulge this idea that he's actually this grand auteur who can tell stories that no one else can mm. tell. And it's like, no, not you, really. should, you should stick to what you're really good at, which is probably making short visually impressive movies that lack any kind of substance. That's what I want to see from Zack Snyder because that's what I think he's best at. Well, or get him a better writer. Get him some better writers. Uh, but I don't a think better writer. I think if he had a better writer, I don't think it would I think he he is too he's too involved. Like it's too it's too indulgent and it's too much of Zack Snyder's vision for everything. I think he needs to be almost kind of reined in and said, no, you just direct what someone has written. But I don't think you get that with him. I think he's too kind of, he mm. wants he wants to be too much of a part of all of it because mm. he thinks he's, and that's, I mean, fair play to him. You know, he's, he's doing pretty well for himself. So who oh, am yeah. I to kind of like mm. judge him in that regard? I would just personally prefer to see him as I say, just kind of reined back in a little bit and say, no, no, this you're you're brilliant at this bit, but this guy's really good at that bit. So why don't you guys work together and and come up with something that's supremely better than if you do it all by yourself? I quite enjoyed uh, Cyborg in this film, though. Like he was a character I actually kind of wanted to know more about. I wanted to know who's cutting his fucking hair, man. His hair is impeccable. 
Yeah. It's impeccably done all the way through, and I just thought, hold on. Like you've been, hiding, turf, you've been hiding away in that apartment mm. for an awful long time, and your His hair is looking He pulls out marvelous. a shaver and does it all yeah, for To be fair, himself. I suppose, yeah, he does grow extra arms, doesn't he, when he's having yeah. a fight? So he's probably he got just a... And guns, everything yeah. he does. He, he just seemed like there, was, like there was there was a story there that needs telling. And yeah. And kind of, like, what's the actor's <laughs> name? So... So that is not in the theatrical cut at all. He's almost not in the theatrical cut. He gets shafted in the theatrical cut, Chris. Him and Whedon didn't get on, did they? Him and Josh Whedon didn't get on. No, he was the one who accused him of the bullying and stuff and unprofessional behaviour. But he he in this Mm. is is very much the big big heart part of this, isn't it? With his dad. I thought that was all done pretty decently, I thought. thought Yeah, his arc is the main one. Like his story yeah. really is the one that everything centers around. Takes, yeah, it takes up the most time and was, yeah, yeah, and, was and actually interesting to watch it. It's most important to the story because he's key to, to winning at the end. He needs to kind of go through that thing of understanding who he is and what he's capable of mm. and everything else in order to yeah. be able to kind of, because they say, don't they? That's a bit throwaway, but they say, oh, you know, you could get lost in there. Like it could, you know, it will just mm. consume you. And he's like, no, nah, I'll be all right. And then he is all right. <laughs> yeah. but, I never, I never fit nice. for him. But this is <laughs> this is where sort of DC have just sort of like they've gone too quickly. He needed Cyborg to have his own film, and would have yeah. been I would far and away rather have watched a film about him than what went on in this film, really, because it didn't really mean much. Because and especially when you're talking about superhero stuff, like the stories aren't that inventive, really. But it's what you do with it. And if you have all that set up and you're already invested in these characters and you like them, you like their personalities and you're interested, what was cool about the Avengers was the fact that you were going to see all of these guys together interacting because you already kind of liked all of them anyway. And then you get to see them together. Whereas with this... You had Man of Steel, which was a Superman movie just all by itself. Then you had Batman versus Superman, which literally in the last minutes showed on video screens a it's clip so of bad. Wonder Woman, um, so Aquaman and the Flash and the Cyborg. I think you saw all four of them, didn't you? M- M- MP4 files on an email that he clicks yeah. on and he yeah. basically trailers the characters. And that <laughs> that's was it. How they got, that's how they and got then, introduced to the universe. <laughs> yeah. And then when did, did Wonder Woman come out before Justice League? I don't think well, it she, did. I don't think she, she, oh did. no, it did. It, did it, it? Because she was in. She was introduced in Batman vs Superman. So she'd had kind of some kind of setup in Batman v Superman, and then had her own standalone movie. So when she's in the uh, in Justice League, you almost don't need as much from her mm. in that movie because you already kind of know. And thank Christ. Yeah, I didn't actually yeah, mind her that much in this film. Oh, did you film. not? I think she, I, she, I, she didn't do much in well, this Well, exactly. Film. She wasn't there a lot. Yeah, but she gives the whole backstory to Darkseid. And it's like, out of all the people you could get to narrate the bad guy's backstory, don't let yeah. her do it. Don't let the least <laughs> talented actor on that team do that. Yeah. I don't really get how a four-hour movie can still have so much exposition required. Yeah. It's like, how can you not tell this as part of what I'm seeing on screen instead of you just me just having to listen to someone say, this is what happened? In a not... Yeah, up, very like, in quite way. a long-winded it's way. It's a very... Yeah, it's a very obvious way I am telling you this. It's, it's, it's... It kind of at least made sense, though. Like, it oh, wasn't yeah. very interesting, but it at least made sense. It would make sense that she knew the story because yes. of how old she is and the, 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 the Amazonians and stuff. Um, mm. And there needed to be, you know, it's just like, oh, she sees this. It was the tomb thing, wasn't it? She went to where the arrow struck and then there yeah. was some secret door and all, whatever. And then she sees the, the, the tale of, um, I almost said Thanos, dark side concrete it at least kind of made sense mm. but yeah it wasn't very yes. interesting yeah that's the thing it's you kind of think zach if i give you another hour to add on to this would you flesh out that story a bit more so we don't have to watch you know gal gadot tell us the story instead like he'd probably say no i'd do some more stuff in slow motion 
Yeah, probably. No, he said, no, actually, Aquaman's going to walk to the edge of a pier in super slow motion, and then some weird girl's going to start singing and sniffing oh, his clothes. Oh, my God. And <laughs> sniff his jumper. I watched, a, I, watched I, think it was a, I think it was a screen rant thing that said she sniffed the jumper and they literally just went, wouldn't that jumper just smell of fish? <laughs> like, what else is that jumper going to smell of? He just discards clothes wherever he goes and most of his stuff is probably wet. It was so long and unneeded, all of that. It was but just... Is, but the, the reason why it's so long is because they haven't done enough to establish what they needed to have established before you attempt a film like this where you've got yeah, this no, 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 no. That, that's not the that's that's not the reason why he's he's slow motioned his walk he's slow motioned his walk because he thinks it looks cool and it's like it does look cool but it gets a bit boring when you use that effect or like slow motion looks cool there's it does look cool seeing things that should be moving around is cool however when you overuse it you end up going come on come on mm. come on and it, and and that it started to feel like that in places it was like yes this looks cool but you're now it's overstaying it's welcome like way and too much he does the walk along the the thing with the water crashing in and he walks along to a tune by um nick cave mm. and the bad seeds in the theatrical cut this is one of the only things that i thought was wasn't as good in this as it was in the in the original <laughs> cut. In the original cut, he walks along that thing to um, "Icky Thump" by the White Stripes, and it just really works. Uh, it's like a yeah. really it's like a really cool tune to play to this walk of this guy that's just like I don't give a shit about yeah, what's yeah, going gonna... on. Whereas this, all of a sudden, it was just like, oh, why is it so moody with Nick Cave and like, mm. and they got rid of the brunch reference too talking of things that, that were gone. You'll, you'll never get to hear that, Chris. Good. Can we talk about, obviously, the new king of the Jokers, Jared Leto? I don't necessarily think it was an improved performance upon the one on no. Suicide Squad. I, no. I, no. I find him a bit annoying. <laughs> He is I annoying. like Jared Leto. I like Jared Leto. I think he's a very talented actor. I don't like him as a Joker. Just outright. No, just don't... Just... I, it's cringy. It looks like someone trying to, pretending to be yeah. the, the Joker as opposed to the Joker. Yeah, it really um, does, and I don't, I don't know why, but there's just something that doesn't <clears> work, and it, I, and the, the dialogue. It's like this whole. I mean, the whole epilogue anyway. At that point, I was rolling my eyes. It was like, oh, you wanted to put the Joker in it. Okay, fine. But Batman just started talking about the fact that he was going to kill him. Yeah. Which again seemed really weird in that character because whole and no, another thing not, about you've Batman. not seen previous Batman. <laughs> He can say he didn't kill anyone, but in Batman vs. Superman, he definitely killed people. Also, weirdly, in the last in Batman vs. Superman, he was branding them, Chris, with his mark, and then they were going in prison and they were getting killed because of the branding. <sighs> then yeah, I, I don't yeah, this is this is not Batman, so was... No, he's not no. really. It's, it just doesn't seem right. He doesn't... And yeah, it, a terrible Joker. Batman and Joker should be an excellent relationship between two different people. And they kind of seemed like they were try, he was trying to imply that. Because that. there's always been this thing with Batman and, and uh, the Joker about the fact that they kind of just need each other and they're always just going to fight forever and ever and ever and ever. Mm. And it seemed like they were trying to imply that with the Joker in this. It just didn't really mean well, much. It looked like they were going to go on a road journey. That's what they were trying to tease, wasn't they? Well, yeah, wasn't the, implica the implication was that he needed the Joker in yeah. order to fix what had gone wrong to get them to that point. It's such bullshit. They needed bullshit. the Joker. It's, it's the same with Lois being the key. Lois, she's so special. She's oh, the key. She so no, she's not. She's do, you know, do you know why she's the key? And I don't, no. know how, I don't know how accurate this is, but apparently the thing that makes, or the thing that was intended to make Superman turn bad was the fact that she, while he was dead, had been doffing Batman and got pregnant. <laughs> so you know you saw the pregnancy kit? You know you saw the pregnancy test in her, in her drawer? Yeah. Right? Apparently, that's because she's pregnant by Bruce Wayne. No. Right? But then she tells Bruce Wayne that the baby's not his, so he goes off to do sort of crime fighting or whatever it is he does, and then everything goes wrong. So what Barry Allen was trying to tell him... So in, uh, for your reference, Chris... <laughs> Don't Batman versus Superman. 
Put the no. bat dick away. <laughs> no, in Batman. Yeah, so in Batman versus Superman, apparently what Barry Allen is trying. So Barry Allen appears having travelled back in time to essentially warn Bruce Wayne that something's going to go tits up. And in it, he says Lois is the key. What he should go back and tell him is that the baby is yours. Because what that means then is that Batman doesn't leave and then Lois doesn't get killed. And because Lois doesn't get killed, Superman doesn't turn bad and the whole world doesn't crash in around them. So it's this whole kind of... That's apparently what was supposed to be the story for for Justice League 2 and 3. Um, was effectively, yeah, sort of. It, it ends up being that you know Batman and Lois settle down with with Baby. <laughs> God knows what it means for Superman. I've no idea. Funny enough, you know what? That is more of a reason for them to have a fight than they did in Batman versus Superman. Why do they fight in that film? Because <laughs> <laughs> Lex Luthor has Superman's mum kidnapped, and he says. If you want her not to die, you've got to kill Batman. And, and Batman, Batman wants want... to kill Superman because he thinks he's a threat to the Earth. So Batman's motivation is... is There's some of... degree. However, yeah. Batman's motivation can turn on a dime because if he realises he had a mother, all of a sudden, actually, you're probably not a threat. And it's like, what are you... F- Hitler had a mum. What the fuck <laughs> are you on about? But this one can, do, can blast buildings and do yeah. shit. What are you on about? Tom was Hitler's mum called Martha. Yeah, that's well, I don't, actually that Martha Hitler. But that's the <laughs> that's the key that's the key to it. Another part of the reason why I don't want to watch that film either, really. Yeah, don't watch um, that film. Nor do I want to watch the Joss Whedon <laughs> cut of this. I, I, <laughs> no. I do think you should watch that just so you can understand why so much of this makes no, so much I more know sense enough to about, me and Tom. I know enough of how shit it is. Chris is not a man of of film curiosity. He's quite happy to go, I believe you, it's shit, I'll stay away. Don't want to know. Yeah, (laughs) don't want to know. Yeah, I do not require to validate that for myself. (laughs) Yeah, basically. That is not, yeah. I don't want to waste my time watching a film I know is going to be rubbish. If you liked this, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. But tell us why you disliked it. Let us know your thoughts. If you thought this was a masterpiece, tell us why underneath. And then we'll tell you why you're wrong. Yeah, and if you can explain what the Martian Manhunter was doing in it, that would be much appreciated. Yeah, which which yeah, really devalued could... the scene between him and Lo- which was yeah Ken- yeah uh, Clark's mom yeah the and nice Lois. scene between Martha and Lois, and then it turns out oh it's it's the fella from the last film. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if you, if you know why he's in it and what the point of throwing him in was when we don't think we're going to get any more Zack Snyder versions of what's going on. And if you also know why the Martian Manhunter didn't do anything about anything seeing as he's been there all of that time and seems to yeah. be all powerful. What have you been doing, mate? Just, just watching Bellend. But yeah, give it a like and a subscribe. <laughs> Very much appreciated. <laughs>